In this video, I am going to explain basic bony landmark of scapula and I will explain why these landmarks are so important. Basically, you are looking right side scapula from posterior side. So this is right humerus, right scapula from back side. Okay? First thing is this one, this is medial border of scapula because this side is medial inside okay and this is lateral border of scapula on medial border basically two muscles attach the one is rhomboid major and rhomboid minor sometimes people consider rhomboid major and rhomboid minor as one muscle they call it rhomboid but either way it makes sense but in this video, I'm separating rhomboid major and rhomboid minor. These muscles kind of adduct the scapula, bring scapula towards thoracic spine. Okay? On the medial border, rhomboid major and rhomboid minor attach. And if you go a little bit up on the medial border and you hit this angle, this is superior angle. If you go down, there is inferior angle. Inferior angle, superior angle. It's easy to palpate inferior for beginner of palpation. Why? Because there is not much big muscle covering inferior angle. Only latissimus dorsi covers right here. Compared to inferior border, superior border is a little bit hard to palpate. Why? Because uh, superficial to superior angle, there is trapezius covering here. Trapezius is very big and very thick muscle, especially this part of trapezius is very thick. That's why it's a little bit hard to palpate superior angle. Plus, Superior angle is a little bit anterior compared to this part, right? See, there's a curve here. So superior angle is a little bit on anterior part. Plus, trapezius covers here. That's why it's a little bit hard to palpate first time. You know, sometimes people misunderstand. Oh, yes, this is superior angle because it's very easy to palpate. This is kind of an end of this part. This is spine of scapula. It's like end point of spine of scapula. Sometimes people think this is superior angle. However, it is not. Actually, superior angle is here. It's hard to notice because trapezius covers here. Okay? And Close to superior angle and on the medial border, levator scapula attaches here. Levator scapula connects scapula and cervical spines. This muscle is also important. Basically, on the medial side, rhomboid major, rhomboid minor, and levator scapula attach. Okay, let's go to inferior part and lateral part. Again, this is inferior angle. It's easy to palpate. Why? Because there's not much big muscle covering here. And if you go a little bit up, there is a teres major here. Teres major is shoulder muscle, which kind of does internal rotation. Okay? And if you go a little bit up, there is a teres minor here. Teres minor is one of rotator cuff muscles. This is very important muscle. Teres minor does external rotation of shoulder joint. You know, there is not much shoulder external rotators in human body. This one is teres minor and the other one is infraspinatus here, covering here and the posterior fiber of deltoid. There are only three muscles do shoulder external rotation. Teres minor from lateral border, infraspinatus, I will explain this landmark later, infraspinatus, and posterior part of deltoid. Okay, there are not much external rotator of shoulder. Okay, now this part, 
this part is flat, but there's, you know, the bump and curvy place here. This place is infraspinal fossa. Do you remember what kind of muscle there is? Infraspinatus. And this landmark is infraspinal fossa. You know, fossa means a concave surface on the bone. Infraspinal fossa, then infraspinatus attaches here. So it's a little bit easy to memorize the bony landmark and muscle. The other way you can remember is, what is this part? This is spine of scapula, infraspinatus. Infraspinatus because it's inferior to, you know, spine of scapula. Infraspinous fossa. You know, infraspinatus, infraspinous fossa because they are inferior to spine of scapula. Okay, let's go to superior from spine of scapula. What is this part? This part looks very concave surface, right? Concave surface. What is it? This is fossa. What kind of fossa? It's a little bit superior from spine of scapula. That's why this is supraspinal fossa. Then one muscle originates from here. What is it? It is supraspinatus. This is one of rotator cuff, by the way. And infraspinatus is rotator cuff muscle. Infraspinal fossa, infraspinatus. Supraspinal fossa, supraspinatus. Because it's superior from spine of scapula. That's how you remember the bony landmark and anatomy. That review of posterior part, medial border, lateral border, inferior angle, superior angle. This is hard to palpate because trapezius covers here and it's slightly anterior compared to spine of scapula. This is spine of scapula. This fossa, concave surface, is infraspinous fossa. Infraspinatus originates from here. This is supraspinal fossa. Supraspinatus originates from here. Okay? And let's go to the anterior part. Medial border, lateral border, inferior angle. And anterior part of scapula also has concave surface. What is it? It is fossa, right? What kind of fossa is it? The one muscle originates from here. That's one of rotator cuff muscles. That is subscapularis. Subscapularis. Then this fossa should be subscapular fossa. Yeah, it's easy to remember. Subscapularis, subscapular fossa. Okay, let's move on to next one. This place, this bony bump, it's kind of a, a random shape. This is coracoid process. Coracoid process. It's very important place, I think. Three muscles attach here. The one is pectoris minor, pec minor. And short head of biceps brachii and coracobrachialis. Kind of only three muscles attach here, but these three muscles are very important for a thorax movement, scapula movement, and shoulder movement. Yes, they are kind of minor muscles. However, they are so, so important. Okay? Coracoid process. By the way, this is clavicle. It's not scapula, but it has strong relationship with scapula. How come? Because it has articulation with part of scapula here. This part, this very wide part is acromion. Now, acromion and clavicle has articulation. Joint here. This is acromioclavicular joint. This joint is not very movable, but if somebody has a dislocation or a fracture around here, it's very hard to move scapula and shoulder. This is very important place, okay? And you see this hole here? This is scapula notch. Why is this so important? Because suprascapular nerve penetrates here. So if there is adhesion here, it can irritate function of suprascapular nerve. 
You know, supraspinal nerve innervates supraspinatus and infraspinatus. These two are rotator cuff muscle. So this scapular notch and supraspinal nerve is very, very important, especially this area. Okay? Review of anterior part. This fossa is subscapular fossa. This is coracoid process. That's about it. And this is scapular notch. This is clavicle. This is acromion. Acromion clavicular joint. Okay, so in this video, I explained basic landmark of scapula. This is not the everything, but these structure I explained today are very important for palpation or understanding a nervous tissue or a relationship with other tissues. So if you liked today's video, please like, comment, and subscribe. See you next video.